Hey, so at the end of last year, I made a 2020 checkout, a video where I summed up all of the biggest tech news and tech trends of the last year, and I also made some predictions for the future. I really enjoyed doing that, so I decided to turn that into a yearly habit. And so this is the 2021 checkout. I think the biggest thing that happened in the phone industry this year has to be LG folding their cards and saying goodbye. I was a big fan of LG trying new things and being quirky, so I think this is a pretty big loss overall. Nobody really filled the gap that they left behind in terms of products, in my opinion, but in terms of market share, Motorola captured most of their share in the US, in Europe it was mostly Xiaomi and the BBK brand, and the only market where Samsung managed to take their share was in Korea. Because in that market, now there are only two players left, which is kind of crazy. LG, you will be missed. Okay, the second big news story of the year has to be Windows 11 getting released, and this is kind of a bittersweet story. Windows finally got some necessary polish visually, and they finally modernized a lot of ancient system apps, which is great. The Windows Store also got reworked, so it is now kind of viable, but Windows 11 was functionally not a huge update, and I don't really see them addressing either of the two huge threats that Microsoft had. Chrome OS is still way easier to set up and manage in bulk, so it continues to dominate in schools and often even in enterprise, and macOS still has a huge advantage with their chips. So coupled with the weird upgrade requirements, as well as the bad communication strategy around it, I think this update had a lot of potential, but in the end was a little bit of a letdown. All right, and next we have the big revival of the Wear OS platform. Samsung and Google got together to make a better operating system, and Samsung finally also made a competent smartwatch chip, which together made a huge difference and gave the platform a much needed market share boost. The next challenge will be translating this success to other brands as well, not just to Samsung, and if all goes well, maybe we will get a competent Pixel watch as well as a few others as well. Alright, next up we have Intel splitting their chip design and their chip manufacturing businesses into two kind of separate business units. This means Intel can and will manufacture chips for a bunch of other companies like probably Qualcomm, including ARM and RISC-V chips which compete with their own x86 architecture as well, and hopefully they will become the third major chip fab next to TSMC and Samsung, with their plants mostly in the US and Europe, while their chips in turn might be made by any of the other fabs out there as well. That will be a massive change for the whole industry. 2021 was also the year when I heard the words supply chain and shortages way more often than I wanted to. I gave up on upgrading my PC because a graphics card costs as much as a whole computer should. Nothing is ever in stock. The price of lumber, for some reason, tripled. I hate it all. Apparently, it's also going to last just forever until the universe implodes or something. So I know this is a first world problem, but thanks. I hate it all. This was also the year that Huawei and Honor were supposed to separate themselves, but of course we can see that they still haven't, because even upcoming Honor phones like the foldable Honor V use Huawei's tech, like a proprietary Huawei hinge for example, so I'm kind of starting to doubt the sincerity of this. And while those two companies are pretending to go through a breakup, OnePlus and Oppo are pretending like they were always separate companies who just now decided to merge together. I think companies are trying to fool us, and it's probably working for the most part. Alright, and now I'd like to highlight the most influential products of this year in my opinion, and I have two kind of product families that I'd like to talk about. First, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Flip 3, you knew it was coming, which have clearly brought foldables to the mainstream this year and every device maker is following in their footsteps now. And second, the M1 Pro and M1 Max versions of the new MacBook Pros, which have continued the incredible computing revolution Apple started with the M1. I think these were the most impressive and the most influential products of the year, so I raise my hat to both Samsung and Apple. And before we move on to predictions for the future, I'd like to actually review my past predictions from last year and see how many of them I got right and how many of them I got wrong. All right, so my first prediction last year was that Apple with their crazy good M1 chips and the laptops would absolutely dominate sales, maybe even double their market share, and I was just flat out wrong about that. 
We don't have data for the entire year yet, obviously, but even though Apple's market share did go up worldwide, it only did so by a pretty small amount. Clearly, the PC market this year was mostly driven by companies and schools buying cheap Windows and Chrome OS laptops for remote work and study, so I got that wrong. Second, I said the foldables market would go absolutely bananas this year, and I predicted that every major smartphone brand would have a foldable by the end of the year, that prices would come down all the way to 800 bucks this year, and that sales would go up to about 10 million units. And I was mostly right about this. Samsung, Xiaomi, Oppo, and Huawei all launched new foldables. The new Honor one is coming out in a few days, and we also know that the new Razer is coming in a few days as well. Sales did also basically triple, and they almost reached the 10 million figure, though not quite, and with discounts, you could sometimes get the flip three for 799 bucks. So I was mostly right, I guess. And my final prediction was that in 2021, we'd see a lot more clashes between politics and tech. And I think I was pretty spot on with this. From China basically nuking all of their major tech companies into oblivion and passing laws on when and how kids can game, to antitrust regulations against Apple and Google in multiple countries, continuing sanctions on the Chinese companies from the Biden administration, as well as India forcing tech companies to adjust their online content, it's clear that the will of governments to regulate tech is stronger than ever. So that was an accurate prediction, I guess. And now let's make some new predictions for the next year. Once again, I hate boring, safe predictions. So these will be kind of a little bit wild and out there, but let's give it a try. Okay, my first major prediction is that by the end of 2022, at least one major Chinese smartphone maker will come out with their own SOC, just like Google came out with Tensor this year. And I think by the end of 2023, custom silicon will be a standard thing across the industry that many smartphone makers will be doing. Google, of course, had plenty of help from Samsung for their Tensor chip, but it is still a new SOC, and Chinese players like Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi are all gearing up to do the same. For now, they have only designed coprocessors like ISPs or NPUs, and it's quite a jump to go from that to a full SOC, but that's the direction that they're all on. And maybe if they can do what Google did and get some help from other companies like maybe Samsung or MediaTek for the more difficult components, such as the wireless modems, I predict that at least one of them will pull it off by by the end of 2022. Second, I predict that the metaverse, or let's just call it VR and AR, well, that will start going properly mainstream next year. To be fair, this has already started to happen to some extent this year with the Oculus Quest passing the 10 million unit mark in November and apparently being a hugely popular Christmas gift as its companion app climbed to the number one spot in many markets over the last few days on both Android and iOS, but I expect next year to be way, way bigger still. I think VR, like many other computing platforms, has a sort of snowball effect built in. If nobody has headsets, then nobody makes content, then nobody buys headsets and so on, it's really difficult to get this ball rolling, but once it starts rolling, then the opposite happens. A lot of people have headsets, so a lot of people make content, so a lot of people buy headsets and so on, and this can get pretty big pretty fast. And I think Oculus finally managed to get their ball rolling this year. Facebook has also proven that they're ready to sell their headsets at cost or even at a loss to keep their ball rolling. So my wild prediction here will be maybe 30 million units sold next year. That would be roughly tripling their sales over this year, I think. So that sounds about right to me. Okay, and my final prediction is that repairability will become a much bigger topic in 2022. I think regulators are pushing for this. It's an easy win for them. Companies like Apple made major announcements like letting people buy components and do repairs at home, and Xiaomi hinted at some kind of improved repair options as well. I can't imagine every company voluntarily offering full self-repairs in all countries for all of their devices, but my prediction is still that at least, let's say, two companies will offer significant home self-repair options for a significant number of their devices in significant markets at least on top of Apple next year. All right, those are my predictions. I will probably be wrong about at least half of them, but that's the whole fun of it. We can review that next year. If you have any predictions of your own, do let me know down in the comments, and I wish you a very happy new year. Thank you so much for spending this year with me. As you might notice, I am in a new space. I'll tell you more about it soon. Don't worry, this is not the final setup. I just didn't have time to make anything more fancy, but something new is coming, and uh, I guess I'll see you next year.